I think it's an emerging science to understand clean air and health. Aerobiology is a very early science. We've studied aerobiology for a long time, but not very often in healthcare facilities. I've always had a passion for the air for years. My original background was in industrial hygiene, and it was always fascinating to me about how we ignored exposures to the biggest organ of our body, which was our lungs. And if you look at early disease, if you look at asbestos, if you look at chemical exposures, if you look at mold exposures, when these hit the lungs, they can cause tremendous amount of damage. And so that led me to a career of looking at environmental pathogens, environmental opportunistic pathogens, as it related to patients in high-risk care environments. There's not a lot of regulations. People will often ask me, what's a safe amount of bacteria in the air? Well, safe really is an independent variable. It's safe depending on how you respond to it. I could have allergies and even a little bit of mold in the air is gonna make my eyes tear or my nose run or just have a headache or feel bad. Or I might be a cancer patient and I might be uh, recovering from a bone marrow transplant where a mold or an opportunistic pathogen could really make me sick. So what you want to be sure is that you do all of the things you can proactively to reduce the exposures in the air. And many studies, including those done at many big cancer institutes, have specifically looked at the pathogenesis of the room environment and the amount of pathogens that are actually brought into the room by the patient, their belongings, the staff, and just things like making the bed or emptying the trash or mopping the floor, cleaning the room, add to the overall loading of particles and subsequently potential pathogens in the environment. But what we're seeing with aerobiology and the science of aerobiology is that most pathogens are also particles. Some are heavier than air, some are lighter than air, and depending on the specific weight of the particle, it's going to set out, settle out either really fast or it's going to take longer. So really heavy particles like fungal spores will not be in the air as long as a really light particle like a virus. We know that studies done in major cancer centers have shown that the particles are most disturbed when the room is being cleaned and that some of the biggest risks or the, the greatest risk to the patient is putting the patient back in the room after the room has been cleaned and all the particles are stirred up. In many regulatory settings, such as OSHA or EPA, there are regulatory controls and there's a thing called the hierarchy of control. And everyone, most people would agree that the highest step on that is to have an engineering control. And by an engineering control, I mean a control that takes care of the hazards in the environment without requiring human intervention. So in the case of a VitaShield unit, the unit goes in the ceiling, it draws the air in through a MERV 6 filter, through a series of fans, passes over the UVC or the germicidal bulb, and then it goes back into the room. No one has to touch the unit to make it work. By providing control technologies, which are used every day in other environments, to make sure you're providing the safest, cleanest air possible for the workers, and quite frankly, in this environment for the patients, you're not only protecting them and making sure that you're doing all the right things, but at the end of the day, you're also doing no harm.